Okay, so we're going to make this um, A5 tent fold um, vintage Christmas card next. It's a little bit more involved than the others. Um, there's a lot more to do on this one and this one has much more scope if you love your distress. So what I'm going to do, this is a card that I made from the kit that you just print straight off and then put together. So this is without any distressing whatsoever. Um, so, but the one that I'm going to make with you today, I'm actually going to do a little bit more distressing and um, just adding a little more depth and a little more colour and a little more age to it. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I'll pop that to one side. I'm starting off with an A5 pearlized cream card this time, uh, just to give it that little bit of um, extra sort of... Um, vintagey kind of looks. When it all goes together it'll all be more creamy rather than stark white. <clears throat> so we've got that. So the base mat, which is this lovely one, which sure I've got it the right way up, yes I have. Okay so what we're going to do is, although it's already got distressing um, as part of the design, I'm going to go around the edges uh, and just add some um, distressing. I'm using vintage photo today uh, and I'm also using a finger dauber. Uh, this is a Sukuniko one um, available in packs of three from our website. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, so that's now done. As you can see, I've just added a little bit more darkness around the edges. So when that goes on, that will look like so. So not quite as stark as the original one. As you can see, there is a definite variation. So that's that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and stick that on right now. I'm not going to put the uh, Distress Ink away because I will be using it again in a moment. So. I have to add a little bit of wet glue. And then make sure we've got the card the right way up. I've made that mistake before. I'm sure many of you have. Okay, so that's going to go down and we've got a few seconds just to play with the borders. Perfect, there we go. Okay, so the next step is to add in our um, damask across the middle. Okay, now for this one I've actually already added some distressing along the edges on this one just to add um, a bit more depth to it but I'll move that to one side I want to add some more but because this is a water-based ink I've had to do it pre-do it and then wait for it to dry a little bit and then I can go back in and add more on top just to give it a bit more 
depth and age like an old Victorian chair or old Victorian wallpaper. So as you can see it's now really starting to look quite nice. So I'm being quite liberal with the ink as well. So I'll just give it a good scrub over. It doesn't really matter too much about blending it that much. There you go. So that's giving it a little bit more depth and a bit more age to it. As you can see, oh, that's better. You can see it now. So lights are kind of making it shiny, but you can see the depth of the distress on it. Looking rather good. Okay, so I'll pop that to one side and I'm just going to drop that there. Grab. No, I'm not. I'm going to grab, if I can find one, I did have some baby wipes here that I was going to use. Now, what have we used them for? Where have they gone? No, I shall just have to use a cloth just to take off any excess ink. There we go. That means Ian's moved my baby wipes and not told me where he's put them. Right, okay, so back to the base. Well, the reason I've moved that off there is because I don't want any ink getting on the back of the card. Okay, so again, using the wet. Now again, you don't have to put this on if you don't want to. If you like the pattern on the paper, then don't use it. It's entirely your choice. You're making the cards, you're in control. You don't have to do what we suggest. There we go, across the middle there. Very nice so far. And then I'm going to add these two little ribbon strips, top and bottom, just to add that little um, finishing detail. Now these are all included on the sheets. So again, they're already pre-measured, so you don't have to worry about doing that. So you've got all your toppers. Again, you've got your faux buttons and rivets. You've got your metal corners and your, your panels and your sentiments that all um, fit together. Okay, so that's the two sheets from the DVD with your various different sentiments again. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and stick that on. Just a thin line all the way down. And again, because I'm using PVA, it doesn't matter if it gets on the card a little bit because it will dry completely clear. So just shuffle that along slightly so it lines up. Okay. And then same again. A little thin line of glue. And then that one can go across the bottom of that bit there. Okay, so that's pretty much finished the base of our card. Straighten that up a little bit. That's the one. Okay, now before I put anything else on now, rather I, the main top of it, is I'm just going to glue on these metal corners. So again, just using a couple of dots of PVA. I'm not going to cover them all. I'm just going to add these little metal effect corners. Oh, fiddly. It's because I've got fat fingers. Just a tiny drops loads of PVA. Again, just line it up into the corner and push down and turn it upside down so I can get to the other ones. I think these little um, embellishments just add that extra bit of detail to it. And if you've got some real metal corners that you wanted to add onto this, then you can do that. Position that in the corner, don't worry about 
the PVA. Like I say, it will dry completely clear. And again, three little dots. And add that to color. That's it, just taking up any excess glue if you don't want that to be seen. Beautiful. Okay. Turn that back around again. Now I have got three little fishtail banners. Now these will go underneath because when I stuck that down. Um, I stuck it to the paper so there is just a paper width that you can tuck under. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all three and then I'm just going to add a little bit of glue to each one. Just a little dollop. And then I'm going to slide them under. It doesn't matter if it catches on the glue because, like I said, it will wipe off. But it will stay underneath just to hold it in position. Just move that one along a little bit. There we go. And then took that one positioned in the middle. All I'm going to do is just wipe that with my finger. And again, push the glue up, swipe off, push the glue up, okay, that will then sit and hold those little fishtails in place, and it's dry. Okay, so that's those added on. So the next we're going to do is going to be the base. So again, add that on with some wet it comes out. There we go. And then I'm going to add this at an, what I call a jaunty angle, but just so it sticks over. Okay, so that's now stuck down. Now the last two layers we're going to do um, on foam pads, which I've already gone ahead and done. Okay, but for this one, I just want to add an ex a little extra layer of distress to it. So I'm just going to use a, um, a scruffer, if that's what you want to call it. Uh, it's got different names, an edger. Call them a scruffer, an edge scruffer. Distress tool. So this has got um, multiple um, notches with the blades inside. You can't cut yourself with it or anything. But all you do is just line up, if you've never seen one before that is, you just pop your card in to one of the grooves and then just draw it along the edge. And it adds that distressed sort of scruffed effect which is very very popular now the only thing it does do of course is it makes a mess there we go all gone all over the carpet for somebody else to clear up okay now you could at this point as well add some more distressing more of a vintagey feel or to hide any little mistakes you may have made. There we go. Okay, so done. So I'll peel the backs off my foam pads. That was me being posh. 
bit left in the corner there. Come on, off you wee beastie. Thank you. Now, with this, if you want to, you can keep it at the jaunty angle, but I'm going to set it straight again because I just like it that way. And again, with this, you can add some distressing around the edges. We're running out a little. That's more like it, just to give it a bit more of a old look. But as somebody once pointed out to me, when the Victorians sent these cards originally, they wouldn't have had all this distress and aging to them. They've all been pristine. So, which is true. So, all this distress just makes it look like a second hand card. Hey! There you go. There you go. Now that just tones in those little edges with just a tiny, tiny little bit of distress. There we go. Lovely. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just take the backs off that. Now I've used the same foam pads throughout on this, so every, all the depths are uniform, but not that that really matters. As long as you don't use different depths on the same topper, on the same layer. Oh, nearly did an Australian card there. And then add that to the front. Okay, so sentiment wise, I've chosen the Happy Christmas. And again, I've already gone around and added some distress to the edges of that and then I'm going to place that on the red damask beautiful and then I've taken the um, the bow and I've shaped it with my bone folder I've literally just taken it in the middle and curled the edges just to add a bit more depth and dimension to it so you can see it's now got a bit of a butterfly fold to it and what I'm going to do there is just take the foam pad off the back of that and then place that so it sits on the same level as the ribbon because they actually do match. So I'm actually going to do that and push that down and then just flick up the edges. It looks like a bit like a ribbon butterfly, doesn't it? Very, very nice. Okay, and I think we're nearly there. So all I'm going to do now is just to add some ink away otherwise I'm going to end up putting my elbow in it. I'm going to just add three little dots of PVA along there and on there and then I'm just going to add these little four eyelets but again if you wanted to do real ones add some more realism to it then that would be lovely. Last one. Remembering the rule of three. Although you do get two sets of these on the uh, on the kit. You get one on the one sheet, and then you get another set. So you could theoretically de decoupage them. Decoupage, decoupage them. There we go. And that's it. All done. So again, you can go ahead and add extra glitter, uh, you can add some glossy accents to um, the eyelets if you wanted to, or you could even go around the edge of the card adding some more distress to it if you felt that it wasn't distressed enough. But a perfect A5 vintage Christmas card for those people that you know that appreciate the vintage and shabby chic look. So Christmas shabby chic, there you go. And that's all from me for this one. Uh, and I'm going to go get ready for our next card project. See you soon.